Redline Tools is one of the world's leading providers of automotive and industrial tools, supplies, and equipment. Yeah, back at Hawk Speed. Let's see what this dude's doing. What do we have here? <laughs> Vets, man, they gravitate towards <laughs> Hawk Speed and Custom. So, what are we doing, man? Uh, converter cam, oil pump, head stuff, uh, new harmonic balancer, training upgrade, and a tune. Damn, I'm getting the works, man. So to do that, what exactly do you have to do? I know you have to drop all of this. All of this. It just makes the most sense to just take all of it out. Take the rear cross member and the front cross member out. Take all of it loose. Disconnect the wiring. Hang the brakes on the car. Yeah. And uh, just take it all out in one shot. And then separate it. Do the torque converter. And then pull the, the cam and stuff out of the motor and do the work on the engine and then put it all back together. So outside of the wiring harness, the brakes, and disconnecting the cradles from the car itself. It's just the, the quickest and easiest way to do it. So yeah. that's what I'm getting started on. The exhaust is off, oil drained, the antifreeze is out, and um, pull the... Oh yeah, I remember this. This is uh, the, what do you call this thing? The, it's a tunnel cover. Yeah, it's tunnel cover. There's a real, num real name for it. But. Right, so transmission is way back here. Yes, the last Corvette. Yeah, I'll put a little video of what happened with that Corvette. But uh, <laughs> Jesus man, you gotta pull all this out. All of it. Pull the headers off. Damn. Are these the stock headers? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think so. That's that low life right there, man. <laughs> So since Lipsy watch, since the the owner of the car watches the videos, we can we can show him what he did to his headers when he ran over the speed bump or whatever. So. Oh yeah, yeah man. So this, this is when he was out crowd killing with a Mustang, I think. Crowd killing. Hmm. Oh, is that rubber? Or? I don't know what it is, man. It looks like dead animal, but yeah, you know, man, you drug a skunk half animal. mile probably. So, man, yeah. It's the cost of being low, man. Oh, yeah. shit. It happens. So, I'm gonna pull this out and then uh, uh, disconnect the bolts from the flywheel that, that mount to the motor itself because it's easier to get to now. Yeah. So, I'll get those disconnected and then I'll start working on the suspension, the cross member stuff, and get all that taken off and then put this thing on the ground and get started. So. Late today. Word. Yeah. I had to finish up the the fenders. Fenders and bed and all that on the Silverado. So I had to get done with that until like noon. You keep branching out, man. So body work aficionado? No. <laughs> no. 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 Don't. Don't put the evil on you. Don't. No. Nobody needs it. No. Okay. No. Because. I don't body work. <laughs> I don't paint, I don't body work. Apparently I don't weld. Oh yeah, 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 you don't weld. Like, I've been wanting to meet this welder, man. I like, know. I think he's a, it's like the Stig, man. Like we all know he, yeah, he exists, but no one knows who he is, man. Nobody knows how to get a hold of him or anything else. It's anything, like, man. You leave Mountain Dews out and he just shows yep. up. Yep, Mountain Dews and <laughs> welder just shows up, welder stuff. Good. That one was loose. That one's loose. Yeah, I did it. Why, why are these loose? Mm -hmm. So anyway, can uh, put this thing together, or put some time lapse together, and we'll get the stuff together. Yeah, I'm gonna put this camera on a tripod, man. You get some, some time lapse action. That way you don't have to listen to my ratchet. Yeah.
All right, man. So, why did we take the back wheels off? Back wheels are off, so I can take the emergency brake cable off, the wheel speed sensor off, pull the caliper off, and then I'll take off the upper control arm from the body. Okay. Yep. And I'll release the shock, and um, I'm gonna take the brake line off of the cradle on the inside, the, the cross member of the cradle. Mm -hmm. And then um, go to the other side, do the same thing and then we can start letting this down. So I gotta disconnect the wiring, I gotta disconnect the, the clips for this, and I gotta disconnect the brake line from the, the deal there, the speed sensor on top of the third member inside the, on top, that you can't, you can't really see it. Uh, but that's there, and um, loosen this up, get up front, and take the bolts out of the, the back of the, the back of the bell housing. In front of the bell line. Um, and then I'll put the wheels back on it because I don't feel like cleaning the cart off and all the rest of that stuff. I'll put the wheels back on it, I'll prop this down, get underneath the car, and then zip the bolts the rest of the way loose, and then we'll roll this thing away. And so that will sit over there by itself, and then tomorrow when we come back, I'll do the front, and we'll get started on this thing. Put a cam in. So man, if you're in the Southern Arizona area and you drive a daggone Corvette, you need to bring in a Hawks leading customer. Because apparently, it's the only thing good at it. Yeah, yeah, it's the only thing good at, man. <laughs> we, uh, I did. So, I mean, yeah, how, this is what, like the, I don't know, 10th or 15th Corvette well, you worked car, on? This car's a repeat car. Uh, I did the exhaust and the headers on this car months ago and we talked about what we were going to do with this car later on down the road and well now it's later on down the road right right so we're taking care of the later on down the road and today right now it's just going to do the the oil pump the harmonic balancer new timing set and Cam, trunnion upgrade, trunnion fix, I wouldn't call it an upgrade, but you know, trunnion fix so the trunnion bearings won't fall out and end up in the oil pan, like the black car with the broken diff. Oh man. That's how that car blew up the first time. Man. Um, the guy who bought that car bought it at the local dealership and they picked it up at auction. Mm. He had the car for, I don't know, six weeks or something other, and stopped running. And then it already had a bunch of stuff done to it. Heads, or excuse me, headers, uh, full exhaust, cold air intake, cam. And um, anyway, the car had a trunnion failure. Mm -hmm. And the trunnion bearings are on the rocker arms. Hey, what is the trunnion again, man? It's the it's the bearing that, that's on the rocker arms. Right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. On top of the, most, top of the heads. And um, so they had failed and ended up in the, in the oil pan. And uh, he's like, hey man, the car doesn't have any oil pressure and check engine lights on. All right. So sure enough, you know, um, brought the car out here. He had it towed in and fired it up for, you know, two seconds. It didn't have any oil pressure and it was rattling. So shut it down, started tearing the motor apart and uh, took the valve covers off. And the top of the motor was okay. Everything was still intact. Um, rockers, push rods, the things that you can see, springs were all there. And, uh, Draining the oil, and when I was draining the oil, it, it would look like the most, the, the prettiest silver metallic <laughs> that you've ever seen in your life. And it was all because of bearing material. So, he, uh, he got a new motor, he got a new LS3. <laughs> uh, thankfully, he had the extended warranty and, and all that stuff, but. I think that whoever it was that owned the car previously knew, obviously, that there was an issue and hoped that it would be all right and then decided that it being all right was not going to be all right and they just took the car and traded it in and went and got a different one. So, anyway. Focus! Focus! Hmm. Why is it dirty crap? So, there you go. Um, we're going to do the trending upgrade on this car to keep that from happening. So, this is a 2007. 
So it's the last year of the, two, of the LS2. It does have a 6L80 in it, so that is its one perk. Uh, LS2 is a 6 liter, and in 2008 they went to the LS3, which is a 6.2. So the, the LS3s do run a little bit better, but just because of cubic inches. But this car is going to run good. It's a max effort cam from um, Texas Speed, I think is where you ordered it from. Yeah. And so we'll put all that stuff together. And, and hopefully Thursday night we're out to it. So I said it and I read about it. And, uh, we put a post up today on Instagram about it. There's been all kinds of stuff. And, uh, it's um, it's a sad day. It, there's there's been a lot of talk about it for the last several months because of spy shots and all of those stuff. <laughs> The car was officially released at the Detroit Auto Show and, and uh, Tokyo Auto Salon. There was a bunch of stuff that was going on over in, in Japan at the same time. And uh, so the car is, is a huge letdown for enthusiasts. Absolutely. Uh, for those of you that do know, yeah, I'm getting shot. Yeah, those you know, two J engine is a uh, pretty historic and uh, groundbreaking engine. I mean, you you can't name you know the top five engines that you can make what seven eight hundred horsepower with the stock. Correct. Block. With the stock. Stock block. Stock bottom end. Stock bottom end. We're not talking about sleeve in and all this kind of other stuff, but I stock. mean, just out the box and make ridiculous horsepower, but yet. And there's, there's a lot stock. of. There's a lot of people and their, their opinions about that as well, about, you know, the fanboys of the 2J and the fanboys of the Supra, and, and that's the reason why um, the cars are so expensive right now and, and all those other things, and... Yeah, because this is what, 50 grand or 50-ish? You're talking about a new car? Yeah, a new, new car. So the first 1,500 cars are going to be 55,000. For what, man? Yeah, it's like or the Evo final edition. Yeah. The uh, the the thing is, is that people, you know, because I don't, I don't matter. I'm, I'm not, I'm not important in the grand scheme of things. I'm just some guy, and uh, so therefore my opinion doesn't matter, and all the rest of it, you know, it's guys like Joel Grannis. That dude does six-speed conversions for. Uh, the Mark IV Supra, and he hates the new car. He's like, it, it, his tagline is, you know, a pun on um, people's not my president stuff. It says not my Supra. <laughs> you know, Joel hates the car. He's like, it, it's 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 a mockery of what we had, and all of the cars previous were a progressive or were a progression of. Of technology, of horsepower, of the touring car, of everything that, that made the Supra a Supra. The Supras have always been expensive, you know, in comparison to other cars. And now everybody's like, oh, well, the Mark V is going to be affordable to the normal person. Okay. The normal person, like, <laughs> we have a doctorate what? degree working at some fancy job. You know. And so. My argument is that I don't need it to be affordable. I need it to be the FT1 concept car with whatever new engine that Toyota and Yamaha can come up with. Yes. You know, because that's what the 2J is. The 1J, the 2J, the 3S, um, the Taurus SHO motor, the original V6 that was in the Taurus SHO. That was designed by Yamaha. Really? Yeah. Hey, you fun know. fact for you guys. Oh, I didn't know that. So, there's... There's something to be said about those those old motors and, and the the technology that was available and what they were capable of doing. You know, there, there's stories about that Ford Taurus SHO motor that it was supposed to be used in an aircraft of some flavor, some you know personal airplane type thing, but they let it run on the engine stand for 10 plus thousand RPMs for 24 hours, and the Ford engineers went back in and was like, "Yo, turn that thing off. We're tired of hearing it." You know what I'm saying? So, Man. you know, and the 2J is, is its own thing. 
and I get it, you know, Fast and Furious and fanboy stuff and, and all of all of the, the hate and discontent, but the truth of the matter is is that you you're hard pressed to find another engine that is as capable as that one was with minimal to no work on the bottom end of the motor and make a thousand horsepower. Absolutely. Know? And everybody's like, oh well that's 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 not possible. Uh, this, that. It's always just, it's just hate and discontent. And for what? Why? You know? But now we've got the new car, and it's got a BMW motor. And again, like it, love it, hate it, whatever. The BMW engine is capable. BMWs yeah. are some of the nicest driving cars on the planet. True, true. You know? I love an M car. M3, M4, M5. Anything with an M on I love them. And... That's not what my, my discontent is not about the BMW. My discontent is about the Toyota being a BMW. Yeah. I don't, I don't want a BMW, I want a Supra. And you can't have a Supra when they didn't build it. Yeah. When they farmed it all out. Yeah, it's like, I mean. It's a slap in the face. It's like putting a, a chicken leg on a Big Mac and still trying to call it a Big Mac. I don't know. It, I don't know that sounds ridiculous, but uh, it's, a, it's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. And I mean, the heart and soul of the Supra has always been the freaking two Jay Z. Well, I mean, even before that, the car. Again, you go and you look at a Mark III Supra, and a Mark III Supra has got a digital dashboard. You know, it's all backlit and digital, and it was all the rave at that point in time. Yeah. Because that's what the Japanese were for, you know. That's what they were doing. That's, they, they were they were executing their prowess as technical technical leaders of that time frame. And you know the the Supra had um, a ninety uh, two thousand. Sorry, I thought it was ninety nine. I think it's two thousand. It has a retractable air dam front spoiler. Oh know? yeah, yeah. You know. Who does that? Oh wait, supercars do that now. <laughs> you know, and this was a super back in, in, in the late nineties. Yeah. So again, I, the car is going to be cool. It's just not going to be what we want it to be. And the problem is, like the N54, the current, not the current, the the, the uh, next the latest BMW engine has carbon buildup problems and the car is very very capable the engine is very very capable it makes good power you know one of our customers has one of those cars and that thing makes almost 500 horsepower or something like that. you go out here in front of the shop and you rip the tires off that will but it has a carbon buildup problem he's talking to me about hey can we walnut blast the, the valves oh i mean you're talking to me about it yeah, yeah. vacuum so you're shooting walnuts crushed walnut shells into one side of the, the head and then you're vacuuming out on the other side so you can get rid of the carbon build up on the valves. It's like, why not just fix the problem? problem right? Like, right. Why are coils dying? Why is there this? Why is there that? There's just, there's uh -huh. just little problems that don't make sense to me personally. So stuff that wasn't fully engineered to figure out whatever you know, problem. The, the, the whole thing can be Oh, well, the 2J this and the 2J had a, a, a oil consumption problem and the valve seals were crap. And, okay, well, you're talking about an engine that was designed in the 80s. Just, just think about that. Yeah. You know, it's like the, the LS was designed in the very, very early 90s. And we didn't get it into the, into the Corvette and the Super Sports and Z28s and stuff. The F-body cars until 97, you know, 98. Mm. So, when was that BMW engine designed? When was it put into production? And how long has it been used? Right, to work all the bugs out of it. To work the bugs out, and the guys are still having problems with them today. And again, they're good motors, and they do run good. But, again, it's just not what everybody wants. And I don't speak for everybody. I'm only, you know, it's just my opinion of, of what I believe. But. I think that if they built the the FT1 and the car came in at 70, 80, 100 thousand dollars, whatever, that the uh, the community 
that the community would have responded the way that they wanted them to. But then again, maybe they don't want them to respond that way. I don't know. Yeah. So. It's time will tell. Time will tell, man. Yeah. Time will tell. You know, all of us, all of us old dinosaurs will figure it out or we won't, you know. So. Hey, we drop an LS in it, man. <laughs>